All right, everybody, my name is Adam. I'm the founder and CEO of Student Design. Uh, and Student Design is based around a single core belief that we can educate university students by using them to fuel business growth. Plain and simple. So education is changing. More than ever before, university students are able to execute complex and valuable tasks as part of their ongoing curriculum. This is illustrated by a growing number of companies that approach universities and offer real money to work with their students. There is a problem with this, however. The university is quickly becoming overrun and bombarded with requests. They have no documented and standardized format to receive those requests. Uh, the professors have no way to even get their hands on those requests because they usually go to the administration. And at the end of the day, the students don't typically work on those projects. There are a number of schools around the country who focus on this type of learning, um, whether you want to call it experiential or whether you want to call it practice learning as opposed to theory. Uh, they include Harvard, Stanford, Yale, uh, a number of Ivy League business schools. Uh, they're all focusing on this idea of education becoming practice as opposed to the traditional theory. Now, is this segregated within a few schools? So we know that it happens, so we need to figure out how much it happens. Uh, and to save you the statistics, um, Basically, there are two industries that are booming right now, which is the crowdsourcing industry, which is the act of taking a traditional task and, and opening it up to a larger crowd of people to accomplish. That industry is booming over 12 months, uh, and so is the temporary staffing and employment uh, industry. Both of these together help to illustrate a growing need for companies that want to outsource or crowdsource projects instead of completing them in-house. Okay, so we know this is happening nationwide. We know that universities are interested in working on it. What is the demand? How can we compare a student capability to a business need? So what I've done is I've looked at the entirety of university students around the country, and there are about 20 million, and there are about 28 million small businesses. I've looked at each individual major, and I've assigned a value to what they can do in school. What can they do that companies are willing to pay for? And I've calculated that out to about $380 million uh, a year annually. Um, and that's income for student design. That's not the, the pass-through money. That is using my current business model, uh, the maximum annual revenue. Okay, so how do we get to that point? So I'm not charging these companies 100 million each, and then I'm just charging four of them, and then I pay taxes on a little bit of it. Um, so what I'm really doing is I'm doing two things. Two primary revenue streams, and the university pays neither. So the way that it works is that a company, whenever they'd like to hire a classroom of students to design a prototype of a knife, or design a new um, purse light, or anything that you can imagine, maybe it's a new medical device, you as a company would come on to studentdesign.com and you would detail that project. You could use your company information, the details of the project, you could upload files, you could require NDAs, uh, or an exchange of documents, and my website streamlines that entire process. Once you find a classroom of students to work on it with you, there is a monetary exchange that occurs, so you pay the university to use their students, and student design receives a commission off of that exchange. Now, why isn't anybody doing this before? There's a huge market, there's a lot of people that can do it, there's producers, there's consumers, why is no one doing this? And the answer is that that's not true. There are a number of crowdsourcing service providers around the world that are doing something somewhat similar to this, but I think the New York Times sums it up pretty well when they describe crowdsourcing as having an Achilles heel of quality control. And so instead of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so instead of each of these smaller industry niches focusing on an individual market like design or engineering or technical, student design focuses on the producers of work, be it the university students and the university itself. So we have a consistent target, we have a consistent, mar excuse me, we have a consistent uh, uh, marketing objective, and we have a history of performance over time because we're dealing with universities. Okay, so to date I've reached a number of milestones in my company. Um, I've won a few business competitions in Cincinnati. Um, I've also launched a beta version of my site. It is online now. Um, I've pleased actual customers. Um, I've also formed relationships and partnerships with top-tier regional universities. And I was one of the eight companies selected for the Northern Kentucky Uptech Accelerator Program, which includes $100,000 over two rounds of financing. Um, so I'm not the only one working on this to date. Uh, I have a number of people that are working on it with me, including a technical team led by Mindbox Studios in Cincinnati, as well as an advisory board and uptech mentors uh, that range in specialty from entrepreneurship to education background uh, to consulting, um, so on and so forth. Um, as I said, my site is live now. You can visit it today. You can document your project as a company, and I will pair you with university students to work on it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to find me after today. Thank you. So is the uh, so is the uh, is the contract.
contract actually between the company and the university, or do you actually sit in the middle? I do not sit in the middle. So the contract is only between the university and the company. Um, my company acts as simply the connector. Um, so similar to kind of an eBay or an Amazon, I provide you the platform to connect and uh, the exchange to occur, but I'm not involved in the exchange itself. And the commission is paid by the company to you? That's correct. On top of what they contract? It comes out of the school's portion. So if so they build it in? They course. build it in, exactly. So if there's $100 that you're paying the university, uh, they will end up getting, um, what is it, somebody did the math, $82 out of that, and I'll end up getting 18 My question is about the, uh, how do you protect the intellectual property, and, and you mentioned the NDAs, but I'd, I'd like to hear a little more about that because if I was thinking about using it, I'd be really worried. Here's my idea that I want design, but I'm kind of putting it out there. That's kind of a risk. So what kind of protections do you already have in place to protect people from that kind of concern? Okay, so basically we're approaching this in the same way that schools are now. So there are universities that are being contracted by actual companies. Uh, they have contracts in place that would help them do that. Um, I would say if you're a GM and you have a prototype of a new vehicle that you absolutely do not want anyone to see, you're probably not going to hire a university for that anyway. But if you're a small business and you'd like to research ideas or to brainstorm a design concept or something, or uh, do a marketing research study, um, you would use the same mechanism that's already in place through the school, and you would have the student sign MBAs. How about the intellectual property that's generated? Especially using university resources and things like that, the transfer centers out of universities are very notorious. It is. So that's uh, one of my main, uh, I'll say my main obstacles. So what I'm doing is I'm proposing to standardize that process um, so that you as a company would have complete ownership of all IP that is produced. It is exactly as though you are hiring a contractor to do the work, but through the process, you're just having students work on it instead. So is that one of the things you negotiate with those universities in advance? It is, it is. So we, get, we basically put that in a standardized format and then once they're entered into the system, um, they have a few options where they can upload their own documents. All right, great. Thanks, Adam. Thank you.